Hi, I'm Josh Manby. I'm the editor of the Undergraduate Political Review here at the LSC. And tonight I'm joined by Hilary Benn, MP for Leeds and Shadow Foreign Secretary, who has been talking to us about Britain's position in the EU. Thank you for joining us. To Our first pleasure. question from the government students themselves. Yeah. What do you think is the current position of the UK, both within Europe and across the world? The current position? Well, we're on the cusp of taking this enormously important decision about whether we're going to remain part of the European Union or not. And it is a decision which will have huge consequences for our future. I'm campaigning passionately for us to remain in the European Union. Why? Because it has given us jobs, income and growth and investment, which is good for families, good for communities, my constituents. Uh, I think it adds to our security in a changing and at times uncertain and dangerous world. And I believe that it increases Britain's influence. It gives us a louder voice than if we were to walk away. So I think for all of those reasons, we should remain. And I would also say that the greatest achievement of the European project has been to bring the nations of Europe together to try and end the conflict that has scarred our continent for centuries. It has claimed so many lives. Uh, I talked um, in the session that we've just done about the graveyards of the First and Second World Wars. And if you want to see a testament to the a failure, then walk past all those gravestones. If you want to look at a success in bringing conflict to an end, look at what the European Union has done. And it's a, a huge achievement that we should honour, in my view. That's a very eloquent defence of why we should stay in the EU. And in 1975, you campaigned to leave yeah. the EU, the position opposite to what you're taking now. Yeah. What do you see now, personally, as the most significant objection to Britain staying in the EU? Well, I think it's for those who want us to leave to make that case. I'm not going to spend my time arguing for something that I think is wrong for, for Britain and for our future. Look at the time in 1975, the majority of the Labour Party and the trade union movement uh, thought that the European Union, people used to call it a capitalist club, uh, we thought that uh, sovereignty was the most important thing. And the Labour Party and the trade unions changed their minds. Jacques Delors' famous speech to the 1988 TUC Congress was very important. We saw the benefits of working in cooperation with neighbours. I worked for a trade union before I came into Parliament. And each day, we, our members would wake up to discover that they were now part of a company that was owned in Europe and other parts of the world. They began to build links with their European sisters and brothers. And there is such a strong argument for cooperation. In a world, we are 7.2 billion human beings. By the end of this century, when I'll be long gone, there will be 11 billion people on this earth. And if we're going to deal with the challenge of climate change, if we're going to deal with conflict, uh, if we're going to help promote development in the poorest countries in the world so that they can improve their own lives for themselves, we can only do that by working together. And the European Union is a very, very important partnership for us, alongside our membership of the United Nations, the fact we're on the Security Council, uh, members of the Commonwealth, and all of the other relationships that we've got. All of them help us to benefit Britain, but also to enable our voice to be heard more loudly in the world. So You've talked about it in terms of a collective action problem. Together, we are stronger than alone. And lots of the problems we face today, terrorism, climate change, you say, are international problems. And with respect to that, in the future, what position do you think the UK should hold within the EU? Are we going to become more powerful? Or will our powers be hindered, given perhaps we've laid our cards on the table by threatening to leave? Well, look, whether we stay or leave will be determined by the British people in the referendum and that will be done and dusted uh, and I hope very much that uh, the, the British people will vote to uh, remain. Um, I think we will because I think the arguments are really, really strong. The, th the thing about the way in which the European Union has evolved is this. Uh, people debate the question of sovereignty. The fact is we, are not, we didn't join the Euro. The last Labour government decided that we shouldn't. It was a very wise economic decision. We're not in the Schengen free movement uh, agreement. Uh, we support the European arrest warrant, which has helped to bring people to justice for crimes they've committed here. We're not part of some of the other justice and home affairs measures. So all of those examples have demonstrated that um, 
we have the sovereignty to say we don't want to do these things. By being part of the European Union, we are agreeing to share our power as member states in the interests of something that will benefit our people and the people of the other countries of the European Union. The single market being the best example of that. This is 500 million people, the largest single market in the world, quarter of global GDP, and we have tariff-free access for goods and for financial and other services. And this is, this is a huge opportunity which has helped to strengthen and grow our economy. And I think it would be very unwise for us to leave. So I don't think it's a, it's, a, it's not a competition between uh, the different member states. The influence that you have depends, as it does domestically, on the force of your argument, um, whether you can find allies to uh, achieve what it is that you want. And Europe will be judged over the years ahead on its ability to continue to achieve the objectives that it has set and to play a really constructive and important role in the rest of the world, uh, including in ensuring our security. If we choose to stay in the EU, as you suggest, how do you think that UK citizens will shape it into the form that they want? How could the EU become more democratic? Well, we have an elected European Parliament. We have the Council of Ministers, who are all elected politicians from the, the various member states. Um, and people forget that. Sometimes people say these decisions are taken by faceless people who aren't accountable. Well, they are, because the ministers we send arise out of our own general election decision. Everybody votes for members of the European Parliament. Um, I'd like to see more openness. I support the, the red card proposal, which has been negotiated. It was in our election manifesto, so that if sufficient member state national parliaments say, we don't really think this is a very good idea, it shouldn't proceed, I think that's a part of, of a check and balance within the system uh, uh, in the future. So, but the, the truth is events and the, the challenges that we face in the world will determine how Europe evolves over the years ahead. But I think we'll be in a better position to, to rise to those challenges and to deal with those problems because we are working in collaboration with our European neighbours. And it certainly gives us a, a greater voice as Europe collectively in the councils of the world, whether it is tackling climate change, dealing with the refugee crisis or uh, all the other things that we're going to have to face up to over the years ahead. Well, you said everyone votes in European Parliament elections. Some might say that the, uh, the turnout shows a different story, but do you think having a referendum, having a debate on the EU, on the benefits and the negatives of it, will invigorate people to participate more in the democratic project? Well, I always would encourage people to participate in the, in the, uh, the democratic system we've got. You know, our right to vote is very, very precious. And a bit like peace in Europe, sometimes we take it for granted. It didn't fall out of the sky one day. It was fought for, for a, over a very long period of time. Women have not yet had the vote um, on the same you know, basis as men for, for a century. And there are countries in the world where people don't have the opportunity to determine how and by whom they are governed. This is incredibly precious. That's the first thing. And the second argument is participating in the democratic process, voting, arguing, debating, lobbying your members of parliament, can bring about the most profound change in the world. People say to me on the doorstep sometimes, ah, you know, politics, ah, you politicians, you promise one thing, you do another, nothing ever changes. And the older I get, I'm slightly more militant in my response while remaining impeccably polite. And I say to people with great respect, that isn't true. Why do you and I not pay anything when we go and see the GP? Why do we pay nothing when we have an operation? because of the three most powerful things in our democracy, an idea, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Out of the ashes of the Second World War, a Labour government said, we're going to create a national health service based on your need and not on how much money you've got in your pocket. And millions of crosses on a piece of paper gave us the national health service. Don't tell me that politics doesn't have the capacity to bring about change. It's why we have a minimum wage. It's why we have gay marriage. It's why we have a rising aid budget in contributing to tackling poverty in other parts of the world. It's why we have lots of things that we take for granted today, and politics is the means, people and those they elect, working together to deal with problems and to leave behind a better world. Because, you know, the future is about you 
and your generation. And democracy is a really, really important part of that. You've got the vote. Please use it. Very positive note. Hilary, Ben, MP, thank you very much thank for joining you. us.